call the meeting to order. The first uh, first item is to approve the agenda. Yeah, I would like to add probably under other business uh, some discussion about our local emergency management plan process and the uh, ICS trainings that are going on in town. I would also like to add the, um, we've gotten some communications from the school in regards to kind of the communication path between the school and the town on events like tomorrow. So um, I think we could probably put that in there on the other business as well we talked about. on um, yep, opening up. Good to me. Yep. So I just wanted to have a, the first first part of our meeting tonight was just mainly just kind of a gives us a chance it's a new year and we can kind of go through uh, the roles our roles as select board members as well as there was a, there's been a few things that um, myself and others have kind of thought about over the years of you know the, the way in which we conduct our meeting at times of going in and out of executive session or um, things like um, if we add to the agenda for the night, what does that mean? Can we take, should it be binding, should it not be binding? Um, to, to give everybody an opportunity to, to hear the, the discussion and be here, so. Um, <clears throat> uh, the first part I just wanted to kind of touch base was, uh, before we go to that, was um, just town meeting itself. Um, uh, any feedback from town meeting that that we have uh, in regards to the topics of town meeting and uh, any direction that any of the taxpayers want to see or any comments from town meeting? Day? I heard a lot of positive comments about <coughs> especially how the budget was presented and the uh, explanation that, that uh, you and Therese did um, made it a little more palatable. <laughs> uh, nobody was happy with it, but, but at least they have a, a real good understanding of, of where it started and how it's progressing down through. So a lot of good comments, positive comments about that. I did hear some comments about the participation as usual, the number of people that were there, and, and, and could we look at other options, you know, Saturday or you know, some other options to try to get other folks there, the usual conversations that you that you hear about that. It was it was a pretty poor turnout. I mean usually hundred and sixty nine people, that's pretty I mean, usually around 100, about two hundred I mean. Yeah. You know, it was actually so probably one of, our, that. one of our better attendees. <laughs> it was pretty it was one of our better attendees. It just was spread out. We had a lot of Maybe it was because of all the chairs that were there. Well, all the people on the on the bleachers. Because at first I got thinking, well maybe we could have had it here. Maybe it seemed like there was a lot of people, but I mean, I know the school on that night, there was hardly. They had all those chairs, I think, in preparation for the school meeting. Yeah. Because it did seem like it was a pretty full room of chairs. I didn't come across anybody that had talked about the town hall versus the school in prior years. That seems to be a topic yeah, of discussion, but yeah. I didn't hear. No, I mean, I think everybody would prefer to have it here, but clearly we can't have the numbers or get the accessibility. So um, I heard a lot of really positive feedback as well, just being in people being clearly frustrated but pleased with the authenticity and openness of the board and the, and the good and the staff. 
person. And, and, uh, what's that? Dave. Dave? Yeah, I don't know that it's going to make a big difference, but as of July 1, that school will no longer belong to Bethel's school system. It will become property of the White River Union District, which is comprised of Bethel and Royal. Mm -hmm. The building itself will become property of that union. I don't know if you want to, if you want to do you have it there? You might want to speak to someone about that? Yeah, probably. <clears throat> Yeah, it'd be worth it because it clearly is a town asset right now. Until July, yeah. until July 1st. So we probably ought to wait until... Well, do we still own the property or are they... No, no. I hadn't heard that. The joint board is in effect currently, right? No. Well, that's not in effect until July 1st. They are they're working on a budget mm -hmm. and they got the budget passed. They're seated. But they can't make day-to-day -day decisions because their district isn't a district yet. Doesn't yeah. it doesn't exist. There's still yeah. the, the Bethel district and the Royalton district, and it's not the Union district yet. It's yeah. So does that come into flourishing in in July? So their July first meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think we'll probably just have to uh, put that on the agenda for July um, for one of us to. Probably I would doubt that be at the joint meeting. And I think you cross that bridge. Or we always have to ask the town yeah. staff for, to get our. Because we got, we got voting coming up in November, too, this year. Yeah. Well, we'll get on their um, agenda for maybe their first one or second one to here. ask for permission. Yeah, the. Um, one thing I was. I noticed during the meeting and um, tried to speak to it to some degree, but it, it didn't really dawn on me until afterwards what a, an opportunity I, sh I or someone could have uh, taken it on directly at the time, but um, there's a lot of concern over delinquency and taxes and, and fees and a lot of disparaging comments are made about the type of person that has delinquency and it's a very divisive tone to have in a meeting when i guarantee you there were people in that room that have delinquent taxes and, and um, i think that it would be something that i'd like to continue to pay attention to in public meetings is for us to um, recognize ways to maintain connection and um, compassion and interaction with each other in the community and we can do that from the board um, and I think I will try to be remain aware and present enough to, to actually hit it head on and, and make it clear that that's what I'm talking about instead of I, mean, I think I tried to explain some of the realities of how a municipality plays part of the game in terms of getting people into delinquent situations. But as a community, we don't need to use shame and guilt as a way to try to better ourselves. It seemed like with Therese, that, I mean, she, it seemed like her tone was that we're, which we are, is that we're trying to work with everybody that is on Absolutely. a delinquency of some, I mean, the last thing we want to do is have a tax sale or right. shut water off. So, um, and, and I think to Carl's point is just we just need to continue that message of that, you know, obviously we do want to work with everybody. Um, sure. You know, so that everybody knows and feels for that. You know, and we, there's no derogatory language or anything like that that we aim towards anybody because you're, you know, at home and home and water or sewer or tax or anything. Right. Not from the municipality, but clearly from the public the public comments that were being made. And it's, yeah. it's understandable, it's frustrating, but I think that we all could have learned. It was a good opportunity to possibly address the way that we can connect together as a community around an issue that's controversial and, and frustrating. <coughs> so my point wasn't necessarily about delinquency, but about connection and, and language. Anything else from, from the meeting that came out of town meeting today? Any, any sense of direction that uh, 
either we have thought about over the, the past week or anything that came out of the meeting talking with others? Well, I'm, I'm new to town, but what I got from that meeting myself was that townspeople just want honesty. They just want us to be direct and forthright, and they get it. You know, it is what it is at this point, as long as we're telling the truth. And that's what we've always, you know, we were harping on transparency. And I think that's that's something I saw from it, is that, like you said, that people weren't happy about the situation that the town was in, but the fact that we were, that we were, mm -hmm. was all out there, um, they got it. They, they understand that it's, it, you know, it is what it is. So. And it's starting to sink in that, that they can come and speak with Greg or speak with Therese and get, and answers and Therese, you know, going to see the, the coffee club there on Tuesday, you know, getting out there and, and spreading the word that, uh, that it's all right there and, and it's, it's starting to take effect. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Chris? Yes. Yep. Just, um, you know, the, the comments and, and the confusion between the budgeted uh, article verse and then the, the line item article. Maybe this fall to give some thought over a more clear way to present that. I know it's yeah. it's a tough question, but maybe we could do a little more research on that and too to see what what might be a better way to present that. Right. Yeah, I think it, uh, yeah, it would definitely be interesting to see. I, I do think it has to do with adding some veracity to those additional items and then basically asking people to approve them but then giving them a chance to shoot them down or to or to, or to amend them and because uh, otherwise if you approve the baseline budget then those things are truly optional uh, clearly we're giving them the opportunity to make them optional but you know like the five fifty five hundred dollars for the um, fire hydrants one resident came to one of our information meeting and asked us why we didn't just put that into the budget uh, and because because we could have, uh, but I think so. I, I don't know. But it'd be interesting to see what the legality is anyway, so that we can say that there are a couple of ways of going about it. Yeah, Dave. Yes, Dave. Sorry. Would it be less confusing if you were to reverse the order, so that if something got voted down, someone could get up and speak that this 194 or whatever is no longer 194. It's 181. Yeah, I think that's basically what, what we're just talking think, about, trying to figure out yeah. what, what, why we're doing it the way we're doing it. I, I, I was concerned personally that, I mean, in our budget, in the, the school, if you pass the budget, we have that money. Right? Yeah. You have to take away from us. That's our money to spend. You have a little different leeway than the select board does, though. So that's what we do with it. Yes. Yeah. But I, I would just, the legality of having an article on the agenda that you voted to approve, and I would, I would assume that once that it's approved, you, that's your money. That's the select board's money to spend as they have decided. Not if the 5500 got turned down, that you would be forced to subtract that. Yeah. Except for that that's, I think that's the way it's being presented is that it's a line item. It's a, it, we're providing a, a veto opportunity to the, but anyway. I, I, I mean, that was my interpretation of it, but I don't know. I heard it, but yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. Like, yeah, maybe, it maybe it didn't get out there correctly, but on those items alone, so the, the fire hydrant replacement, the, um, the extra maintenance to the fire station, those separate items, that allows the taxpayers themselves to do a line item veto. That's the only time. So if we, so let's say if we included the fire hydrants for $5,500 into our base budget, let's say, even if someone stood up and said, I, I don't like that and I want to decrease it by $5,500 in the budget, that doesn't mean that we have to take that out. Out. We, don't, we don't have the 5,500. I can't do a line item. I can, you can't with the school, but I can. Add, I can tell you to not spend 5,500 dollars on right. fire hydrants. Well, you. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on fire hydrants itself. We can research that, but I'm pretty sure Dave's correct on that. Or is it just 5,500 dollars total? Now I think I can tell you where to take it out. Yeah. It's a little different. The school, town versus school. They have a little more control over 
with the actual. Yeah, we should look into that. But yeah, because I didn't think it was that way either. From my ex my experience, it was that we would have to take fifty five hundred dollars out, but it doesn't come out from any particular item. We have to take it off the budget. We don't have it to spend. We could legitimately take from there because clearly that's what it was intended for. But if we felt that the, we couldn't live without the fire hydrants, then we would spend it on that and take it out of truck tires. <laughs> well, okay. well, yeah, we've got some research to do. Well, if you, look, if you look at Randolph, the way they do it there, they, it's Australian ballot, so it's a little different setup. <clears throat> but each individual, for example, in the human uh, services, each one of those agencies is an article by itself. Uh -huh. no, well, and they're allowed yeah. to vote yay or nay, so they never really get to the final dollar figure until all the votes are counted in the But they can't which go are, down to the budget. No. no. So, no. so they don't have an article that has a budget. But they vote Australian ballot, too. Do they get approved? It doesn't have It doesn't until the end, so they see which articles were approved and which articles weren't. Then they can establish the total. They do have an information meeting where I think they can. Well, this is all stuff that needs to be researched in the fall. Yeah. That'd be great. A little bit more you know, authenticity. Yeah. 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 I know it's always been a little confusing in, in the way in which it's been presented because it's instead of an addition, it's almost it's a deduct, you know. But that's that's the formality that we we not just us, but the model that has been used. Yeah. I think you can look back a few more years. If you fire back a few years, you'll see that there very rarely was there those additional things. It was a budget, and, and the voters could adjust that budget to the floor. Mm -hmm. And only in the last few years have, have there been line items coming up because the, the board might have wanted to get a consensus on whether this was important to the taxpayers yeah. or payers or not. Yeah, some of them, but hasn't the human services always been out on? It's always been separate. That, that has been. So we've been following the, that suit by bringing up several, because we have been trying to be more accurate about what it actually cost the town to run and then being clear about like the highway fund and particularly when we brought it on for the first time. So yeah, so it's and interesting. We've really and I think that was more because in a lot of the citizens' mind that's more of a donation to these to these various agencies and you know do we we need this much money to operate the town these are extras that, that go outside same with the ambulance yeah you know it's a little it's not really functioning a town business I'm sure it would be good to see what kind of leeway and what kind of regulations there are around that. they're out there so yeah yeah we'll have to look into that yeah. the, uh, the town equipment fund used to be a separate article and now you guys are and I talked to Delbert years ago, and the reason it went into the budget because the number was getting so high mm -hmm. that they were afraid it was going to be turned down. Was it 125,000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, if you put that out there, it's 125,000. I bet you'd have a hard time to pass it. So yeah, it's the same thing with the fire, fire, fire equipment fund. Yeah, I, I, we used to vote on it every year, and, it, and it's been rolled in now. But it was a lot less years ago too. Yeah, I know, but it was just. The, uh, I mean, off the top, did, it, did anybody know what happened in Randolph with the White River Valley Ambulance? Did that get passed? Yes, it did. Okay. Everything got passed. So. No, no big curveball there. No curveball. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right, so we'll move on. Um, so I just want to get back to, it gives us an opportunity to kind of revisit, um, well, one, set our meeting time and, and dates if, if we want to keep the second and fourth Mondays of the month um, at six. Does that seem to be the consensus to, mm -hmm. to stay with it? Mm -hmm. Change it for me. Um, yeah. It's a tradition. <laughs> <laughs> I already got my calendar set up. <laughs> 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 now if we can only get this clock set for that, we'd be all set. All right. And then just kind of, like I was saying before, kind of going through it and reading um, through the open meeting laws. Um, you know, I think probably as a, as a board, we should probably um, talk a little bit about um, adding items to the agenda and what that means or doesn't mean. 
Now, reading through the open meeting law, it's very gray. So you I would just make a comment that caution you that the, that is not the open meeting law. That Vermont League of Cities and Towns frequently request frequently quest, ask questions is a compiled um, interpretation. It'd be much easier, it's much more important and clear to read the actual law. And that's what I refer to. And it doesn't make necessarily change what you were going to say. No, about. It, it, you know, it, it basically says that, you know, we can, as a board, you know, we can um, add an item to the agenda and, and act on that yeah. item that night. Um, so it gives you the authority to do that. However, it does open the board up to subjection, you know, could be at a legal level or, or other, um, you know, if we didn't technically warn it to others. Um, Cause that, that was kind of what we had gone through, Greg. Yeah, but it gets, it's very great. It kind of gives you and the I also, within it. And I don't think it makes any sense personally. I don't like to take action on something right. that, that's been done. Tonight's the first time I'm getting information. And I, I don't it's, think it's good business. Definitely they're leaving it to a judgment call whether or not it's, if it's important enough to be acted upon immediately, yeah. then we would. But if it's not, they yeah. just recommend that it's, it, it go on to the next one. Like our meeting after the town meeting, I could say that that was an emergency meeting because we couldn't leave that meeting without a chair. So, you know, because we have, we can call an emergency meeting for issues that we don't feel can be left undealt with. So I guess on my end, I just want to get a consensus from the board on if we add, you know, and we frequently do add items to the agenda. And I, I can't remember if we've acted on any of them ever or if they've just been more informational talk. But, you know, as a, as a board, you know, going forward, um, if we add to the agenda, would that be more for informational and then we would set that if, if, so, if we need to take action, we'd set it for, right. for the next date uh, to properly warn that mm -hmm. item. It would be fair to, to the public because there might be something that somebody was really adamant on and they might not have a chance to know that we was going to talk about it at that time. It could be. I, I'm, I, I've said this to Greg too and, I, and I've said it ever since this law came out or been, ever since this law has been updated. That, um, the, the law itself does not refer to all the gray areas that Vermont League of Cities and Towns illuminates. It's, um, it's clearly meant that the business that we discuss and the action we take is done in public. Um, I would hesitate setting a precedent that basically kowtows the select board to a, a gray area interpretation to a law. Uh, if some um, while I agree that we shouldn't necessarily set an agenda item that we haven't had a chance to review, and I, and I agree that it's better for the public to, uh, to hear our discussion, it just wouldn't necessarily, um, I think that it's important that we not be paranoid and recognize that, that we're, wor we're working, if we're in public and we're working for the best interest of the community, it's much different than us working behind closed doors and not letting people know what we've done. So, um, uh, although I, that's just my, I'm not going to try to shoot down the action of the board if they feel like that they, they want to move forward with that kind of a, of a policy around agenda items. I just hesitate. Um, well, I mean, there's two, validating the two ways that we can do it as a board. Is one, we can make it a board policy to do or not do that, you know, in that direction when it comes to adding agenda items. Or we can do it on, you know, a case-by-case -case motion where, you know, we kind of need to remember the, you know, why we are here and, and um, you know, and who we do work for and, and that we give give the taxpayers an opportunity to hear the article before taking action on it. Um, I mean, sometimes, it, you know, it, it is tough, but sometimes if you make a policy that you're, you're set in stone with that policy, um, it doesn't give you the flexibility not to say, I mean, this this has been a wonderful board to work with. I think, you know, you know, there's not one person on our board that we have to have to talk with and say, just remember who you work for, you know? 
<laughs> you know, it seems like, you know, when we come into this room that everybody here, um, you know, puts their differences aside and they're not pushing their own agenda. And, uh, you know, we're in the best interest of people of Bethel, which I like. But you know what? At some point that could change, you know? I mean, you know, I know other towns, they fight all the time. I mean, there's other towns, if one board member's missing that night, they might bring up the topic they've been waiting for for two years to, you know, get approved, you know? So I just, you know, I just want, it's nothing that we have to adopt. I just want us to I, I, think about I, that, what we'd like to I do. I personally think it's a good policy to say that if we do not have the information prior to the meeting, that we don't take action on it. And, and and we can start there. And if that means that we want we want to also extend it to items that might need to take action. If somebody brings up an issue, whether it's a select board member or public, and bring it up at a meeting, and it clearly is going to require action. If we're based on the fact that we need more information, then yeah. move forward, take action at an appropriate time. Well, I think sticking, sort of like you were saying with the, the case by case, it, it allows us that if we're in a situation where maybe we didn't have information prior, but we need to take action immediately, like you know, like the tires the other week, you got us information in time, but maybe you couldn't have, and so it, it there I can see where there would be instances where we may need to make quick decisions that we don't really have an option not to, or if we take the option not to, or force ourselves into a situation where we don't have that option, we could be hurting the town or the, the road crew, or, you know. So we, we don't want to put ourselves in such a position that we can't make those decisions, but I think if we're, as a board, agreeing that in, in general we would want prior information and make a decision, we can get information day of, we bump it to the next meeting. That's pretty much how we've operated in the last few years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, you know, I was just reviewing. It's good to bring it up. Reviewing, and you know, there's. I mean, I think we change the or add items to the agenda often. I was trying to think. Geez, can we take action on those? I think we have in the past. Maybe we haven't, but just want to get the consensus of you know the board and what we want to do with that. Sounds like that we're pretty good moving forward in the direction that we've been in without having to adopt. Well, for example, tonight we brought on the issue of the communication with the school, and it seems like there may be some confu confusion there, and we may need to take action on that to make some kind of a decision and to guide our management. Right. So, um, and whether or not we can wait or not, it, we can decide right. when we get there. <laughs> well, you know, but there's, there's a difference, you know, if we have to take action on a, a communication issue or a let's say a budget issue of buying tires yeah. or something. That's different than all of a sudden pushing through a, a policy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That would affect the town. Bylaws. You know, that's the thing I, not that, you know, like I said, I don't see any issue here, but I mean, you hear it in other towns all the time. Right. All right, you, you know, don't set a precedent that, you know, that then when things get right. more right, now yeah. you've got a precedent that doesn't so, allow I mean, as long as we're all on the same page, I think yep. we're, yep. we're good on yep. that. And then the other part was, um, and this was brought up by um, Greg as well as the um, the way we enter executive session and just making sure that we're covering ourselves um, that there's some wording that has been put out there to use to enter executive session based upon you know if it's a legal issue or whatever. and it. It might be better for for the board to use the formality of it to protect ourselves um, for something to come back on that. And that, you know, and it's basically a you know a twelve word sentence that you know we could just have as a um, template. And How is it different than what we've been using? It, so, so what VLCT recommends is that we actually state the briefly state the statute that we're talking about and the statute that allows us to go into executive session. So instead it's of just, uh, instead of just uh, for legal matters, we've got to explain now yes. the legal matters. No, we have to use the statute. Using the statute itself. Title one three zero. Yeah, yeah. Not you. Could, it's still the idea. Is still to, to be be detailed but vague. So yeah. you know, you, you tell them what we're, tell people what we're going in for. You know, you don't tell, of course, who or what or, or right. when. But uh, be detailed about what and state the statute that allows for you to go into executive session on that matter. Yeah. 
Uh, it's just a template that we would have fill in the blanks with whatever. Uh, it'd be real easy to do it to script. It's probably what three sentences long. Yeah, and we, I mean we could just have a we could have a template here at each meeting. And, right. Mm -hmm. and, and again, that's just a recommendation by the LCTA. Just you're you're really covering your bases because there are certain statutes that, that allow you to go into executive session. Uh, the statutes name particular uh, business items or particular things that you have to be talking about in order to go into executive session. So it gives you that that ability. And they just say in there that they recommend that you, when you make your motion, that you're you're dictating and referencing those those statutes. Well, it's interesting. So I love the people at VLTC. They're a great resource. Um, but we also need to realize that they don't have any standing in the government and they don't have any authority over us. Um, and these recommendations are great, but um, make sure we're not the dog getting whacked by the tail. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't have anything on the agenda tonight for for that, so. Good. But yeah, we should have that if you guys want to. So if you want to follow can, that. If you, look, if you look at the uh, frequently asked questions, it's in there. Uh, I can't see. I can't it's see. on page five. Huh? It says page five on the executive session, number 21. Executive session. Clearly state the municipality. So number twenty-five. Body. Oh. The logistics of entering into executive oh, session. And again, these are recommendations from VLCT. These are not the law by any means, but we're just trying to protect our. Yeah. And so we can just have a template that's exactly. and, and that you fill in break the down the, sub, the subsection. Exactly. So if it's for legal reasons. Yes. Specifically, we have what legal reasons or we have um, personnel. personnel. That's about it. So we could have, you know, Chris could have a, a copy of the, you know, those motions and each person you could read it through just to be safe. So there's those yeah. 313. Right. It's basically just referencing the title and then and then providing as much information as you can without well let's see if you're without giving away the details of the what's the disciplinary and dismissal action you'd say one BSA thirteen subsection A four. Yeah. So so here's where it gets a little more involved. Number twenty six talks about making two motions. Um, I don't know. You know, the first motion to find, so they're talking about um, finding that premature general public knowledge would place the, the public body or person involved in a substantial disadvantage. So this is if, say we were um, negotiating a contract. We don't want to negotiate a contract with the public if it's with David Eddy possibly and he doesn't want to know, or we don't want him to know how much we have in our budget to do this or how much we're, we're thinking that we want to spend. So because of that reason, and that's the section that we're quoting is that, or that, that issue is why we wanted it into executive session. Uh, that would be the first motion, so it gives you an example down there. I moved to find that premature general public knowledge regarding the contract with the ABC company would clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage because of blah, blah, blah. Um, that would be kind of your first motion, and then the second motion would be, okay, we're going into executive session to discuss this, and here's the statute. Boom, boom, boom. That's, that's the idea. Um, I don't necessarily know if you really have to have two motions. I think it's well, redundant. But. That's what they're asking us to clear with the rest of the board that we all agree that there is premature general public knowledge that we want to discuss. If everybody on the board agrees that with that, then we so we, that we go into executive session. Right. We can use common language, or we can use this language. And of course, the lawyers would have us, would prefer us to use right. this well, I mean, But I know that town, there have been some towns that yeah. people didn't understand that what just happened was that the board made a motion to go into executive session for legitimate reasons. Well, I mean, just a, another example would be, you know, what the DRB faced, you know, through their hearings there with, you know, having sworn, sworn in versus not sworn in, where that can be used and not used. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a lot of times what we do talk about in executive session is, you know, 
legal. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know. But you also have, you know, we're being videoed too, so it's a, yep. could be observed by other other people. But well, I think the think opportunity for and not just to put this statute to it, but it's more of giving a little bit more information on what that topic is without getting into the details. Because if we just say, going into executive session, talk about personnel matters, that personnel matters could be, you know, very, very broad um, across the whole town, where we might be able to give just a smidgen more detail without you think you, know, that, you think that's the point i think the I, point I think is mostly kind of just to be clear with the public that we're actually that we have standing and that we're going to be talking about something that we that don't want. Well. Yeah. yeah because uh i, I mean i yeah I, I just be careful they say contract with abc company but in my preference i, I wouldn't even recommend wouldn't even rec recognize the, the company that I mean, we're talking yeah, I think about. more important is just to state the statute because if you look through the, the statutes there are Sporadically, there are places where it says everything is in public except this, and this is why. This is the statute and the title, and this is the section that says you are not required to be in a public meeting. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So that's what they're reciting. And that's what we're, we are reciting is that, that statute uh, so that everybody out there knows that, that there is a, a legal um, reason why we're doing what we're doing. And we're allowed to by law, mm -hmm. and not just because we feel like it's not yeah, so if you, we should we can work on it. Come on, with something that's comfortable for us to say. And, and yeah, works. I just think that well, that this example isn't necessarily that good because if we were contracting, if we were considering a contract with a local person. Um, I don't think that it that it does that individual any good for us to mention that we're considering a contract and then everybody knows that we didn't exercise that contract. I mean, or whatever it is. It's just it's. We have the authority to, to, to discuss these issues related to something that could put someone at, at disadvantage or put us at disadvantage, whether it's legal or personnel or business. Um, and we should just figure out how to say that clearly so that nobody has any um, question or once we've done it. I agree. Good idea. Yeah. Okay. So if, if that's something that the board would like to do, we could definitely yeah. put together the language and that. Yeah, and I was just kind of think we at the end of the day we'd have just a, a simple template that we could use. Yeah. And, you know, that yeah. we can read off. For our, for our reader, to our what do you call that? <laughs> Tele teleprompter. Teleprompter. Yeah. That, we can, that we can have to go in and out. We can hang a banner across the back <laughs> up there. Just to cover everything. Or cheat sheet on your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, still haven't seen our appointment yet, so I don't know. It's not like coming. Um, so we'll just continue on. Uh, we need to uh, designate the newspaper of record. And that's the Herald. I believe Herald. Herald is where the Valley News is a backup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should we change that? No. <laughs> I got her attention. She's getting in the right now. <laughs> her finger's going faster now. Mm. Yeah. Do you need a motion? Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. Make a motion. We we keep the uh, Herald as the primary and Valley News as the secondary. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we'll keep the Herald as our primary. Valley News is secondary. And also we need um, to designate the official town, which I believe the Randolph Animal Hospital is. No, it's the. Uh, it's country. Oh, country. Oh, country. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. country. Yeah. 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 It had been Randolph. Yeah, that's right. It's been a few years. Make a motion. We leave it as is with Country Animal Hospital. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. So that would be the country animal hospital. Yeah. And Royalton. When did we change that? Last mm -hmm. year? The year before? Because mm -hmm. then, let's see what I came out of the off. I think that we changed, might have changed in the middle of a year because of uh, something that uh, was about. Maybe we changed it when um, when we changed our court, our constable. All right. So 
so we'll move on. Uh, next order of business is the letter of resignation and letter of interest. Um, Brad Andrews is resigning his position with the planning commission. Um, but he also has a letter of interest to the DRB. Everybody can get that in the packets. Mm -hmm. Rick, is this to fill Bob's position? Oh, yeah, should yeah. yeah. received a letter of resignation from yeah. Bob Meister. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So it's not an addition. Nope. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Fill that slot. Okay. I make a motion to appoint Brad Andrews to, uh, well, first of all, that we accept his resignation from the Planning Commission if he needed that, uh, but uh, appoint him to the Development Re Review Board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So Brad Andrews is moved to the DRB. It's, I didn't see anything from the Planning Commission on, um, was there anything in the Planning Commission with filling his seat? I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I make a motion to accept Bob Leister's resignation and thank him for many years of amazing commitment to the town of Bethel. All in favor? All right. Just a comment. Does anyone at the town office actually send out a letter thanking or should that, as chair, should I do that? Okay. Yeah, please do that yeah, for us. Yeah, I'll from you. Yeah. Are you going to contact Brad? I can do that too. Or do you want me to? I mean, we, I can do it. Okay. Be a little more official than the Sure. Yeah. And the next item is to appoint Lister, which this was the uh, position that what was being um, filled with Deborah Leahy, I believe. And um, <clears throat> Luis isn't here tonight, but um, uh, Luis and, uh, and Jim Gray had uh, had interviewed uh, a couple of candidates, and and they'd like to move forward with offering the position to Kristen Judkins. So um, it seems like she's more than qualified for the position, and. Um, and would fill our need at the Lister position. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I'd make a motion that we appoint Kristen Jenkins to fill the balance of Deb Leahy's term on the Board of Listers. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think what we ought to do, and feel free to throw in information on that, is when we get to the um, when we get to some of these other appointments here, if they're not not here, or if we haven't reached out to them yet, we may want to uh, skip the ones that we have question marks and give them time to answer back to the town. Yeah. Um, we can get some information out to them. Okay. For next time, um, so I would, I would, uh, you know, move moving forward through these, and um, yeah, I'd like the the board to weigh in on each one of these. But um, do you feel that we can move forward with the with the constable position? Mm -hmm. um, it's constable and townkeeper, isn't it? Right. And yeah. townkeeper, yeah. Now I know as a constable, I know we had talked about this. A few months ago, that um, that Mark was looking for a multiple-year commitment. Mm -hmm. If I remember right, I know typically this is an annual renewal mm -hmm. or appointment to the board. Um, so I don't know. So if you want to appoint, if you wanted to change it to two years, it'd have to go in front of the at, at our town meeting. It'd have to go in front of the board or in front of people for a vote. Mm -hmm. We just did uh, the kind of consensus I got from, from some of the other discussions we had was that we wanted to wait and just kind of fill yeah. it out. Uh, Mark has mentioned it numerous times, so he's very interested in having a two-year term, but I think that's something we would have to just put on the, 
uh, rewarding for the next town meeting. Yeah. yeah, I think that my feeling is we've gotten some really good feedback about some of the work that Mark is doing, but we're clearly spending more money on law enforcement, and um, I just feel at this point it gives the community a little more um, say, even though it's an employment. Um, but clearly, we can consider it for next town meeting to see whether or not it makes sense to bring him on for a two-year term. But I make the motion that we appoint Mark Belisle as our first constable and pound keeper. Second. Second. Okay. All day. All right. All right. All right. So, so we've extended Mark's. Uh, constable and townkeeper duties for another year. The uh, the next one on here was the uh, appointee to which which we have two vacancies um, currently with the. Mr. The Chair, I would like to rescind my resignation, and I will serve on that again if if, if you folks so desire, because I don't feel that I'm down there as a select board member. I'm down there as a member of the public. Okay. But I, I agree, though. I think that my feeling is that Mo would provide us with some continuity moving into the um, into this transition that we're hopefully able to pull off. So um, I would I'd make a motion that we appoint Mo, reappoint Mo Brigham as a select board representative to the Bethel Royal and Solid Waste Board. Yeah. Second. I'll second. Okay, mm -hmm. all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Yeah, and so, um, but we do need a, a public. We uh, still have a vacancy. And it, there's no reason, there isn't actually anything in that agreement that says that we even need to have a select board member on the right. board, but there's nothing to say that we couldn't appoint two select Yeah, board it members. doesn't say that at all. And I think the. You know, I, I think looking back through it, the, the intent was to have one one person from Royalton and one person from Bethel be to be on the board. I think more more or less to keep a watchful eye on you know, to be a direct liaison, yeah. um, and then be able to report back to the board. And, I, and it sounded like that the direction, at least what Mo had talked about a couple of meetings ago, the direction that maybe should be there is more of a Towns people and no select board right. members, uh, which is a great. I mean, possibly in our in the agreement that we're working on, that would could be spelled out in the language so that we could have some more continuity and less susceptibility. I think it's an interesting juxtaposition, really, because the Bethel with their town manager system, we're clearly used to having. The select board be um, designating our responsibility to a manager, right. whereas the Royalton board um, doesn't operate that way. They have a, they have an administrator, and so it, it tends to be that they're much more hands-on, and um, which is which is fine. But I think in this situation, we're clearly looking to try to create a, a facility where there's a, a primary. Executive director that's in charge of the facility and has a board of directors that can be a resource to them. And the select board will get their information either through talking to the members or by reading the minutes. Yeah. yeah. I think the whole idea behind it is just to have a, a third party board, um, you know, a, I guess a non biased board, um, you know, to kind of read between the lines of the original agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which hasn't been that way, but and, do we have any other candidates that are interested? Uh, well, Carl alluded to that we could have two slot board members. I didn't know if either one of you felt like you wanted to. Well, I thought about it, but I wasn't sure how the, how that would look. You know, the, will it pass the smell test? Well, look at all the people that are bang, banging down the door. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You know, because then does it become a, is there a you you perception? Gonna a, you going to be a troublemaker? No, I'm just saying, is there a perception, <laughs> you know, perception of... I believe it would be, but... You know, would it be best if we give it 
Yeah. Give it another. Let's see if we can get some public input. See if we can get it. We need to put something in the paper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we need. We'll advertise for you. We, we haven't done a lot of advertising because we've kind of just been sitting our hands a little bit on it to see how things shook out here. Yeah. Um, but we can advertise for it. There hasn't been a whole lot of outreach on it, so you know maybe there there might be somebody out there. I don't know if anybody knows. Come come in. Anybody here would like to um, come here? <laughs> Well, I mean, I think we, we probably ought to give it. Um, we should do our diligence. Yeah. yeah. When, when's your next meeting? Uh, Wednesday. Tomorrow. Wednesday. So. So, we'll so we'll have two members there. Yeah. And, so and I'm pretty sure that, that one. Walton's only going to have two members there. So we're going to have two. We'll have two more board meetings prior to the next meeting that you'll have. Right. And it, mm -hmm. So if I get a map to you tomorrow, we'll get paid. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So we can get it posted. Post it for two weeks. Like we do. So yeah. So obviously we're gonna we're gonna miss your next joint board meeting, which is Wednesday. But that gives us two meetings of ours. Yes. To find yeah. find because an appointment prior to your next meeting. Because we only meet we, we meet the, the uh, second Wednesday. So do we want to give it? That'll give us a full. Two weeks to, right. we'll put, or more than two weeks. That'll give us this week. You know, three and a half weeks to explore options that are out there, and then we can uh, we can put this back on the agenda item for the um, uh, what twelve. Oh no, it won't be the wrong, something like that. The Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> wrong one. So the ninth. So April 9th meeting. Yeah. We'll, okay. we'll put that back back on there and yeah. make a decision at that point. Hopefully we'll hopefully we'll drum up some excitement from I was the town's people. Well, if Mo wasn't going to re up then I would you know, consider going on the board, but I think just having two select board people it just might well, my big problem is that we've got a lot happening and, and any new member is going to take a few meetings to get up to speed on what's really happening down there. And, and uh, I've been at all of the other meetings, Paul, for mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that one could feel like this was, I mean, it's not like, like a select board member is going to hold any more authority down right. there. You're, you're just an informed, you would be an informed member right. who can contribute substantially to moving forward. And I, you know, I, if we can't drum up a, another public member, then we can consider it. And I think it's entirely legitimate. But we need to have three. Yep. That's the basic, yeah. So we will advertise this week and next week and come back if we want to do it. Candidates. Great. Sounds good. Um, we have other appointments, um, fence viewers. I guess what I would, I guess at this point, what I, my recommendation is that we would reach out to them. That we would reach out to Defense viewers, tree warden. Tree warden is deceased, right? Mm -hmm. And I would wear coal and wood and give an opportunity for. Harvey can't see anymore, so I don't, you know, and LB Trash, he's not even in town in that right now. So do you think we could probably give that the same same look at as the, um, yep. the solid waste portion? We'll give it a couple of weeks in the paper. And I'd talk. throw my name in for tree warden. It's been something I've wanted to participate in for a long time. There's statutory requirements and authority for the tree warden, and I think it would be a job that I could fulfill well um, if the board felt like it was appropriate. Otherwise, I'm willing to see if somebody from the public could step up. Yep. And, Do you know anything about trees? <laughs> I, I could study. Do you know anything about wardens? <laughs> I actually have tree wardens. I've actually been, I've studied tree wardens. I've got training as a tree warden. So, okay, I gotta ask though, what exactly is a fence viewer? I hate to 
demonstrate ignorance, but boundary differences between neighbors. Neighbors. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Right. And the wear of coal and wood. Make sure that since the town buys nothing. Yeah, but if, if uh, you bought a quart of wood and you thought you were getting chipped, uh -huh. you could report it to the wear of coal and, and wood. wood. All right. And clearly, the state. Um, Agency of Commerce takes care of that stuff now. Um, and we have certified surveyors that deal with property lines and the listers have a lot, but these are um, archaic positions that have never been eliminated from the legislature. Okay. So would we, do we want to wait till the ninth to appoint these or if we gave it uh, one board meeting cycle? Two weeks? Do you think we could appoint these at our next could, meeting, or yeah. do you want to give them? I, I, mean, I don't think that we're bound, bound too heavily by time, but yes, yeah, sometime in the next month. Mm -hmm. But reach out to all of those yeah. who are on here that are either still in town. Yeah. As you said, Albert's no, in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he why sold, don't we? He sold his house, house there, so I don't, I don't believe he's in town anymore. To make it easier on advertising and, and giving us enough time, why don't we? Why don't we look at the appointments for these positions on the 9th as well as, as a solid waste board? Um, and I would recommend that that wh whoever wants to put their name in hat to be a present at the meeting. I think right. a lot of times it's, you know, it's, it's no different than at uh, town meeting, you know, a little off subject, but there was, there was some, um, confusion at town meeting in regards to one position that was held last year and, right. and then uh, another person was that wasn't there got no, and, uh, nominated and appointed when the other person was there and you know so um, but so we've got two positions that we are, are confident are vacant do I need the, the True. tree warden in the way of coal and wood yeah and do and I know the fence viewer well, I have to contact them. They, that may not we'll contact all three of them. But we know those two are vacant. Do we need to advertise for those in the newspaper? We do. Okay. Yeah. I would, I, and you, that's why I was saying it might be easiest because you can put it all out in one one advertisement mm -hmm. um, of what we're looking for. It right. also gives you the opportunity to reach out to those those people. But so no, the, the only wrinkle in that is that if you contact these guys tomorrow, you may find that there's a fence viewer that doesn't want to participate, and you could advertise for that. And you also might find, um, well, I think if you contacted Bob Dean and El Albert and the, th and the three uh, fence viewers before you made the advertisement, you would know whether they were vacant or not. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I assume Bob no, Dean should be fired. Yeah, I'm sure too, but I just, it's true. better to contact them prior to here. Otherwise, you've got to. So, so we'll advertise those and we'll stipulate them that we'd like them to be here on April 9th. Mm -hmm. for a or a letter of interest. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, if you yeah. don't want to hear that. Okay. And if, if not Bob, probably uh, Dave Albigeni might get it. It's just good to know that, that the person's interested in the position and that's kind of one thing that I've never really liked at town meeting day is anyone can stand up and appoint somebody and second it and away we go and that person may or may not want to do that so yeah I guess like with the listers appointment we can assume that she has interest because she submitted a resume, right, resume right. for yeah. give her consideration so. yeah. okay. all right Item number five, which is uh, approving, uh, looking at the Vermont State Revolving Fund, below the water master plan loan agreement, which we had talked about at last week. Right, so this is the initial step in the water master plan. Uh, this is a, a uh, planning and loan, it's called. Um, because it's a planning loan, it's not required by the state statute to go in front of the people for a vote, even though it's taking on some debt. Uh, it's a forgivable loan. So the way this works is that if we um, if we go forward with the state revolving fund and we get funding through some mechanism, whether it's the state or uh, or other, uh, this loan will either be 
removed and forgotten about, or it will roll into the larger loan itself, which will then have to go in front of the voters for, for the regular uh, the bond vote. This gets us off the ground. This gets us off the ground, yeah. Uh, this is for the planning only. So this is, this is the, uh, the loan agreement with uh, uh, the revolving fund for $12,000. If, if uh, the other stipulations, if we do not move forward on a larger project that's funded, um, we will have to pay this back. It's a, it's a zero percent, and there's an amortization schedule in there. It's a five-year payback at zero percent interest. Uh, but of course, we will move forward and do do some project, and this will just get rolled into that or or forgiven. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So I'm just asking for your approval and some signatures. One signature, so I would make a motion that we authorize our chair to to approve this loan agreement. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And what was the time frame on on this again? Uh, it, I was thinking. I mean, are we talking six months, a year? Or? You know, I thought it was going to take almost a year, but um, we had a kickoff meeting with the engineer, and they were talking like probably less than six months. And then it goes to the state, of course. They have their hands and everything. Yeah. Uh, so they'll have to look at it and get comments on it or whatever. But we should see a finished product, 90% probably at least, by within six months. They're already working on it. It's actually, they talk like three or four months. We've we'll already done a lot of the footwork. We've already come and they've done the, the hydro flow tests. And they've done yeah. a lot of the mapping and things like that with our asset, uh, our asset inventory that they had done previous to this. So a lot of the, the on the ground kind of work is done. It's really more of a model so now. The state obviously knows that we're doing this. Yes. Thing, so I, I'm assuming that they're probably waiting for receipt of of the document so that they can approve it in a timely manner. I guess is what I was getting to with the state. But you know, so if we get that back in six months, then it's going to go to the state for approval. Right. For and, their, and that, is no. there any any time frame on the state with their? <coughs> I mean, the state yeah. can be anything from. Two weeks to well, it took them. Yeah, it took them over four months to get back just the engineering, yeah. the, uh, the great proposal, the agreement that we had to do this. It took them over four months, and they had one little comment on it, which was insignificant. Right. Why does it help with, with them knowing where we're at with this? If yeah. they're, you know, I think waiting the, the, uh, the anticipating receipt of this, right. and then it'll, there'll be a, a prompt. I would hope that they would be motivated to that because they know the condition of the you know the, the needs that we have, um, but I don't I don't really know. You know, I'm, I, I've heard that the state can be really prompt sometimes, and sometimes it can lag behind. So I, I don't know. Uh, but to get, as far as our engineer being basically 90% complete, which is ready for review by people, um, they think within the next three or four months. So I, I give it six months to be safe. So maybe in him. And then we're looking at probably, you know, three, four months maybe for review, worst case. So yeah, six months puts us. Yeah. Probably, you know, a little less than first and next year. So we ready for some construction perhaps in spring. 2019. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we could actually start, we could we could probably start with the engineering part of it before the ticket gets approved. Mm -hmm. um, if we choose that, you know, we say we want to do the tank or, or whatever, we can start that process. Yeah, but you still have to go through the construction loan process mm -hmm. before we didn't take really long, start long to do any of that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, cool. yeah. So, you John Hancock on that. Okay. And item number six. There is a, there is an exhibit C. Yeah, that's for everybody. That's required by everybody, the majority of the governing body to sign. Are you going to pass that stuff around? Oh, God, it is. Yeah, so there's another one. Another Exhibit D, Resolution Certificate. Wow, uh, why can't they just make it simple? <laughs> you forgot who you're dealing with. <laughs> there's the rest of it. He's not a lawyer. He doesn't know why. Just, just to begin. Oh, thank you. <laughs> This is just the beginning.
Is there any movement on the 
and new signs, or there was some talk about? He's, so the idea was that he had some grant money coming that we're still waiting to, to hear about, and that grant money could be used for things like that. And uh, the thought was to either retrofit these with solar panels, because the batteries are just pain, especially in the cold weather, they don't last an hour at all. That we either retro what we have with solar panels, or we look at something new. Because I've used them in the past that actually already mounted with solar panels. And they, they have a little more to them, and they're pretty reasonable, but that's pretty fast, large piece. Are those portable, or are those? They're not portable. Yeah. They're not portable, no. I mean, they guess it could be, but. They're it, movable. It's a, yeah, they're movable. It's a box about that big, mm -hmm. like that, and then the solar panel sits on top of it. So they're movable, yeah. They're not, they're not portable. But they're not as portable as the no, ones that we have now. No. But these, you know, I mean, if you get these, if we retro these with solar panels, that's going to take away a lot of the, the ability to, to move them, I think. Right. Because that's a, a large deal to, to mount there. So. And more uh, chance for vandalism. Yeah, there's, yeah. More yeah. expensive vandalism. Well, they're not high enough to either to try, try to keep them out of the way. Uh, you, you have the bottom, so you have to be seven foot to the bottom of the sign, and the sign is however big, and then you've got the panel that sits up on the top. So it's usually up out of the way. Uh, but anything can be vandalized, you're right. Yeah. 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 No so we're waiting to hear back from his grant to see um, what, how much he's going to get and, and if he's going to get that so we can look into possibly getting the signs. Well, we have a couple of locations that tend to be more of a fixed location than a portable. You know, maybe maybe we could look at mm, coming into town. potentially those areas that we use it the most to, to have a fixed. Yeah. And then, then we could use the portable ones to just... Move around. Move around. Okay. Yeah. When we get as needed, I'll bring you the uh, uh, the cut sheets or whatever of the, the sign that I used in the past, and it's it's pretty slick. You can actually program words into it to say things. It's got three settings on it. It's got three colors. It's got like a, an amber color for caution. It's got a red for you're going too fast. And the green is you're going under the speed uh, And each one you can program words. Like we had to say, if you're doing the speed limit, you can say thank you. Uh, or slow down, or welcome, or something like that. So, um, but it would probably would be a good thing for downtown. It doesn't fit. It's got a little flash to it because it's LEDs and it, it flashes when you're speeding and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, by the school. But out by the school is the location, the fixed location. I'd love to see. Right. Off by the yeah. town office. So once we, once we get there, we get a more information. I'll, I'll bring that to you. Okay. okay. Uh oh. Yes. yes. Dave. Does this have an ordinance on flashing signs? I don't know. It does for uh, do. signs for uh, for uh, businesses, signage for businesses. Yeah, we the school is a business. Well, it wouldn't be the school. Part of the problem with having a sign there is it's, it's you know, it's being right? It's not a flashing sign like an LED flashing sign. It's a flashing sign like a crosswalk sign. Yeah, he's no talking about the fact that we're talking we, about flashing some orders. We got a word, yeah. He's talking about there was controversy when the school went to put up their neon sign, their informational sign out there because it didn't conform to the to the DRB. However, our previous previous town manager had basically let the ball get started and going in the right direction because he said that it shouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. But then when it turned out that the sign was there, it was found that it was basically in. in um, Con it was in conflict with the bylaws. And so you know, nobody else is allowed to put up flashing signs. So theoretically, the argument is that our highway safety signs fall under the same concern. Which is fine. You know, when, we, when, I, when I would have brought them to you, we, could, we would love to see if they meet the town requirements. If they don't meet the zoning of the town, then we wouldn't put them up. That's different. That's what we would check. He's, what, he's already he's saying that what we already have up now. Well, you said it's the word. Was it the words that were the issue? Because what's no, the it's the flashing sign. It's not. No, no. Yeah, it's a neon flashing sign. Yeah, hmm. and so we just exercise the eminent domain. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we tried to put a fire downtown so I couldn't have my neon flashing sign. But <laughs> you. Okay. But I think that the voters approved at town meeting several years ago the use of these signs. Not so much that they approved the use of the signs, but they approved the expenditure for signs like this. So clearly, what's that? I'm sorry to interrupt, but I don't think that signs were a possibility when the money was approved. It was approved to do something to mitigate the speed. 
maybe look at the wording of the article. I'm not yeah, no, you're right. I'm splitting hairs here, but no, I, I would just bring up the fact that we got in a lot of hot water. We had to change our sign, yeah. do things differently. Right. And I just don't think it's a very good precedent mm -hmm. to come down on the school and then the town turns around and does, a, does something similar. Yeah, well, uh, for the record, I mean, for the record, I wasn't coming. I didn't come down on the school. I thought that it was. Uh, oh, you weren't the one. I thought it was a, a, a menial uh, ex exploration for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's interesting that we should find some way to reconcile it so that we can explain it to people. But the, for public safety, what my point was is that that. During that article, there were there was a lot of conversation about the use of speed signs as one of the options for things to spend money on. And, uh, so we all know that speeding in downtown, many, there have been many recommendations for the use of these signs. So uh, we should explore what how we can explain that the use of them in, in terms of our. Bylaws. Sure. So we have the town constable to explore. See a lot of tickets this time around. Nope. Busy guy. It's been taking it easy on people. Further smartening up. Yeah. Maybe the signs are working. <laughs> But you know we've you know we've had uh, we have a lot lot more a lot better presence up there. And I, I think it granted in the week during the weekend when, when a lot more, we have a fair amount of out of town traffic that comes through here, and um, and I would say probably a majority of that traffic probably doesn't really know if the constables here on Mondays or Wednesdays or ever, but. It seems like with his presence, I mean, the tickets have, you know, they kind of peaked last year. We had, you know, at one point we had six, seven, eight tickets in a in a board meeting. Yeah. Uh, you know, had a, what four days or something. He was writing like two tickets a day, and now they've come down a little bit. So hopefully that's a, a result of speed decreasing in the town. Uh, I haven't personally had any uh, comments and negatively towards that, which right, I had received quite a bit, especially on the corner of uh, you know, Sand Hill, Church Street area. I, there was a lot of activity there months ago with speed. I haven't, uh, I haven't heard anything from those folks anymore, so I will reach out and see what they say, but it uh, seems like I see them out and about a lot, uh, which is good. Well, we also had a lot of activity with the new poles being put in and you know, a lot of road maintenance and things going on too that's helped to slow things down. Of course, the nicer days are coming too. So no, yeah. The speed will be picking right back up. I can't do it. And we'll move on uh, town manager's report. So my report is in your packet. Uh, a couple little quick highlights. Um, the Champlain Farms, I have reached out to the owner and given him our proposal for the revision of the EUs. Uh, we need to hear back. Um, I talked to him a little bit and I think it's positive. I think it's going to be fine. I'm just waiting for him to, to get back with me on a, an official yes or no on that. So, um, <coughs> Bridge 33, just a, just an FYI, this last document that you guys just signed that allowed me, will allow me to submit the 2019 Structures Grant to do the, um, the actual construction part. Um, we're currently working on engineering. It's about 60% 60, 60 completed for that bridge. And we're hoping that uh, in the summer or, or fall, we'll be able to get that bridge completed. Um, I'll submit the application and, and talking with Chris Bump, it shouldn't be an issue at all getting the funds from them, so uh, we'll just keep moving forward on that. And we'll have to close the road for a period of time. Yeah, the road will have to be closed for up to three weeks. Yeah, and we'll do detours and all that to, to get around. But without that, it's going to be significantly more expensive to have traffic control the whole right. time. 
um, and it's it's already significantly yeah, it's already it's almost over budget, so that would push it way over budget. So uh, I, I've looked at kind of the, the, the route around for a detour. It's, it's a few miles. It's not unreasonable. It's not great, but it's not horrible. So there's, there's alternative ways in there. For there the right, right. right. If you live up there, you know how to get there to avoid. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully, you know, if, if we keep the road shut down, it'll, it won't take that long. You know, the hope, the hope is that if it's shut down, they can get in and get out and be done with it. So. Uh, and then lastly, I uh, um, talked with our attorney and we have sent that uh, proposal we talked about for the Bethel Depot. Uh, that counter proposal has been sent to them and we're awaiting a response. Okay. there's any questions? No other action other than what you described at town meeting on the painter arrangement with the... With the yeah, just waiting to get uh, waiting to get his uh, I got his insurance and waiting to get um, sort of his, his dossier I guess uh, his, his qualifications so that I can send that over to the state for the review. Yeah, yeah especially when it involves the boom truck that we need. It's some crazy angles. Yeah, I remember he, last time it was done, it was like he's got the liability insurance. He's just got to send me over. He's done other supposedly this company has done um, some work on his affordabilities at the colleges. The local colleges. Um, I'm just waiting to get all that information so I can send it over so they can review it. And he's got it tentatively scheduled for, I think he said the month, um, like a week in July, I think is what he told me. So hopefully it'll get done. Good. Yeah, it'll be real good. A week is pretty aggressive. And the, um, the signs are all posted for month season now. Signs are all posted for month season, yeah. We, uh, um, we got all those up actually the day that, that the next day after we talked about it in the meeting, the guys started putting those out. And then also behind my report is um, Teresa's report for financials. Yep. Um, I can try to answer some of the questions, but I have some of the answers here. But um, she marked 67%. I, that's you know 67% through our budget. Um, just to kind of give you a yeah, the comments are pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of moving things around, putting things kind of where it should have been. Uh, there have been some coding issues in the past, and we're trying to get all that squared away. A little bit of that was just the learning curve, I think, with having the, the supervisor coding their own stuff. Yeah. But I think we'll get there. And I know we're in the transition phases of the new administration, you know, uh, newer, well, newer managed public works. And um, I just want to make sure that, and trying to get our budgets to where we think they should be, an accurate budget. And I was talking to Teresa a little bit on just the importance of the importance of transparency with a combination of, you know, I, I still think there's probably going to be, you know, one or two budget cycles of, um, yeah, I don't want to use the word deficit, but there'll be some two, you know, there's going to be a period of time where we're still trying to figure out where that, where that efficiency is and a combination on, on in the field and at the budgeting. Um, mm -hmm. End of things. And I just want to make sure that we're as transparent as possible when it comes to showing that to the voters for next year. And I guess what I mean behind that right now is, let's say our our budget runs twenty thousand dollars over for in you know when July comes, um, but we collected a hundred thousand dollars in in back fees and and property taxes. I mean, I, what I'd like to do, or I, you know, this is my opinion, and yeah. I'll share it with the board. But you know, I think what we ought to do as a board is we ought to present that to the voters next year. Of we have a hundred thousand dollars in the undesignated um, fund. Right. However, we have twenty thousand dollars that we need to retire as a deficit. You know, what I mean, sure. to make that transparent rather than say. We came out ahead eighty thousand dollars and pat ourselves on the back. I think we have to be as transparent as possible. And that gives, like, um, one of the gentlemen that had talked at the um, town meeting day, you know, gives us the opportunity to to take that money and put it towards our, our long term obligations that we're retiring currently. 
if that you know makes sense. Yeah. But uh, it also gives us that opportunity to, to look at what that cost if if in fact we do overrun, then you have that opportunity to really look and see where that expenditures were right. in terms of how we adjust moving forward or whether or not we feel that we can. Sure. Like, yeah. like one good day without sanding might save us some money, but then it's like, can you get away with it? <laughs> and, that, and that's some of the challenge that we have right now is, you know, we have, you know, like we talked about, we've had uh, a history of budgets that weren't necessarily at, you know, accurate. However, we never had line items that were were documented correctly, so we don't really know what the true cost is on a certain line item because they just kind of lump things together, and it was not not really a, a great record keeping when it came down right. to. So it's going to take a couple of, like Carl was saying, you know. Hopefully this year we can really see exactly what those line items cost us, so that we can make um, you know a better estimated uh, budget for going forward. Right. And if that means that we're over, then we're over. We're going to show that, and then, you know we'll show it in our new budget that we're retiring a deficit. However, we did bring in. You know, we did collect because it, it kind of seems like right now we're. I haven't talked to Teresa since she put this together, but it looks like going through the numbers that that overall we're going to come out with with money in the checkbook. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still have a question. My guess is we're probably going to have some sort of a little bit of a negative balance in the budget. Uh, but we're going to come out ahead because we're going to collect. We're, we're ahead on collecting fees and, and these right. taxes that are due to us. So. And I, you know, I think it, keeping with the um, consistency of our board, I think it's, you know, very, uh, in the 12 years I've been here, I, I don't think I've ever been to a town meeting where, um, one, we've retired deficit, and two, that we've had extra money to, uh, in the undesignated fund to appoint towards something else. Mm -hmm. And I think that would really be a great opportunity to bring to the voters saying, hey, you know, as you can see, we are retiring a small deficit from last year. We've acknowledged that. We're working on that. And oh, by the way, we have this in our undesignated balance that we can use towards, you know, a war you know, warning on town meeting day. Mm -hmm. Reduce the tax rate. Well, well, it could be reduce the tax rate. It could pay down the long-term debt. It could be put towards the water tower needs to get built or whatever that is. But I think it's a great opportunity to bring towards the town's folks. And, mm -hmm. Because I've never had the opportunity to say, I think that's a great idea. You know, <laughs> every year it's just we're on to the next budget. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, and, and we're you know we're constantly monitoring the budget. Um, I sit down with with the department heads and the supervisors, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, try to do it once a month, but we don't always get there. But we kind of look over and see where we're at. Um, especially certain departments. You know, wintertime, of course, the, the road departments mm -hmm. using highway departments using stuff. They're right. they're spending money like crazy. Um, so we, we're not, you know, Teresa, myself, and, and all the the uh, supervisors are all are all aware of this, you know, the budget, and we're trying to stay within that budget yep. as best as we can. Um, so yep. we don't just forget about it. Anymore, yeah, I mean, I would just say, I mean, not that we we do it any differently right now because I've seen you guys in action, and yeah. um, it, you know, it's it's nice to see. But you know, I would just say, just be very. Very, very strict on what we buy between now and the right. end of June there to you know try to come as close as we can. Right, and that's exactly that's what we're trying to, you know, I just just make everybody aware that, you know, this budget was not my budget and and I, you know, I don't know if the numbers are completely realistic, but we were doing everything that we can to come in at a But again, you know, once we get you know, I, I gotta think that line item by line item when we're sitting down here in October and looking at this budget for for next year, you know, I, I think we're going to have a lot better information sure. on line item, line item rather than just saying, mm. "All right, the last five years it's been five thousand dollars," and doesn't mean that anything ever should have hit that line item. It should maybe have been zero, maybe it should have been ten thousand. But I, I think we'll have a really good, good handle on it. But it looks like uh, it looks like looking through it. I spent some time through this. It looks like we're. We're going to be pretty close. You know, we might be a little over, but we're going to be pretty close 
um, but we will have some undesignated money that's coming in. Yeah, Trace is really good at explaining this. Yeah. Uh, repayment uh, collection uh, chart that you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once you explained it to me, it made, it made perfect sense. On that, yeah, 30, 60, yeah. 120 or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, you know, she's making great headway. But. No, I think, I mean, we're clearly headed in the right direction. I mean, the reports, the thorough notes, yeah. just to have those reports. The coding of, of, of accounts and things like that. Yeah, for, I think it, the only thing I saw through there that did give me a little bit of concern was not so much the town's budget, but it was a little bit of the water and the sewer end of things was um, the position that those are in. Yeah, I've talked with Tim about it, and he basically has told me that everything, the things that he's needed to buy to kind of restock the shelves, because we want to have them on the shelf whenever something goes bad, has already been done. Uh, the only things that are really left are those fixed cost things like chemicals and testing and um, getting rid of the, the solid waste type things that, that, we, that we know we have to spend that money no matter what. So I, I think we're okay there. And, and I think, you know, looking at it will be good as long as, as long as we are collecting at the same sure. rate. Sure. Which, you know, we're getting better at the collection, but it's not, you know, you know, you're, you're seeing, you know, right now we're at 71% cost, so we should be at 67, but we've only collected 50%, you know, so we're, the revenues aren't still right. equaling to the, and granted they're not always going to be the same, but it's, yeah, it's a snapshot in time, yeah. Yeah. there's things that can happen the next day, it could be faster. It, it seems like, yeah. my comment I want to back up to, it's not that we're going to be running over deficit-wise, cost-wise, it's, it's hopefully that the collections equal the cost right. towards the budget, which is still behind. Which will be a new thing. Right, yeah. So, based on, based on the other stuff. All right. Any other conversation in regards to the... No, no, it's great. Nice to have it. And we have the select board meeting minutes from the 26. Other than the capitalization of my name, I think everything else was fine. <laughs> I make a motion we accept the minutes as written for the 26th. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And we have to also we have to adopt these annual meeting minutes, or are they just for us to review initially? That we have to adopt them. Do no, I don't. Remember, I don't remember that we do. I just knew that they were here. Yeah. Yeah. Just information. And then we have uh, we have our committee minutes. So you you also have a list on your list to advertise for an individual for the planning commission. We have, How many we only have three people on that board according to the, yeah. I think that there's only three people right now. Yep. Hi. 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 Hi, Geneva. It's good to have a couple. I, I met with them when I first started, I remember because they were short on, on numbers, and they said that they had done some advertising on their own, and they put the word out there that they had, there's nobody that they could interested, but we'll do an actual in the newspaper. Two weeks, is that enough? I think. Just kind of see what Yeah, we should definitely, mm -hmm. when they're in the process of updating the town plan. Yeah. It would be great yeah. to have more than three things. I will also get that with that. We need three more to replace the car. I know. Right, we still need somebody for the Red Cross shelter, too, if we advertise that. 
I know luck with that either. So if you know anybody, you know anybody, you're going into a good situation. That's something I'm going to throw at the school too, changing ownership. Uh, we, that's, we talked about that tonight. I don't know how that's going to, if, it, if it's going to affect the Red Cross shelter at all. But. Just to And I think we have that conversation with the, the new board in July. Sure. You know, the, the Red Cross shelter as well as the um, our meeting. Right. Uh, town's town's town meeting. There's got to be somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Anybody you know, I think would be okay. I mean, is lately is getting training in how to see us. You're stepping into a great. I mean, she's got everything together. She's she's not like. Is that the one you need certain certifications for? Or is that the other one? Yes, you will need certain certifications, need, but yeah. you, you're good at that. And the pay's about as good as it gets. <laughs> she's like, how come nobody ever told me about ICS before? This is awesome. <laughs> That'll learn him. So keep your your eyes and ears open for anybody who might be interested in that position. It's a great position. And it's a, you know, it's, it's a little bit of It is necessary. It's very important when the time yeah. comes. Yeah. Well, let us help you make your decision. <laughs> but Carl's already there. <laughs> he's he's going to make the decision for me. No, we, we can nominate you. Well, well let, me, let me chat with Greg about it and do see some what research it, or some research. Yeah. What it involves. Don't research. Just say yes. <laughs> Give me a call. Kelly. Kelly? Okay. Even talk with Carla. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll check in with Kelly first and then reach out to Carla. Yeah. Cool. And other business, we, we added uh, two items here. Yep. Carla, one. Yeah. Right. So um, I've been in the capacity of chair, I've been sitting on uh, the emergency planning committee. We've been working through a pilot program to rewrite the local emergency, what they're calling now management plan as opposed to operations plan. And it's uh, one, it's a statutory requirement in the past. All we've had is a checklist with a bunch of names of who would fill in different places and so forth. And this is a much more dynamic and engaging process. And we're in the process of um, Enroll, uh, sort of communicating with all of the quote unquote stakeholders in the town who will be on that list as people who either require certain services or could provide certain services or would potentially be the site of a, of a potential emergency. Um, we just held an ICS 100 uh, training on Saturday, which is required for many of us in town government, but it, we held it as a, an opportunity for people from the community to also take it because we feel that the more people who, in the community who understand incident command will be able to support the efforts of the municipality and the first responders in any kind of an emergency. So on Saturday, we will have another training, which is for municipal um, managers, but it's also a basic overview of the ICS system. And Wednesday, we will have a stakeholder meeting at the town office or here, Greg? It's at the it's town, here. it's here? Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going to be inviting as many of our stakeholders as we possibly can, and I think we'll suggest. I mean, we were we had four of us in the room the other day, and, and we go through scenarios within the within the, the training program, and um, you can take all of these trainings online, and, and some trainings better than none, but it's really valuable to be in a group face to face with people who you may likely be involved in the incident with and to, to work through scenarios and see where people are when they start and where they what we understand when we get done. So I would highly recommend that we all do what we can to be here on Saturday at noon for the ICS four hundred and two four oh two. And where is it located? Here. Right here. Yeah it, from noon to four. And Rich does a great job working through the training program. 
and we'll try to recommend, we'll make the rec I will suggest that we make the recommendation on Wednesday to try to arm twist our, as many of our stakeholders as possible to participate. Um, Are you looking for, local, you said it's required of those in town government, but other people can take it too? Yeah, we're looking for as many people. We, we, the idea is that, that anybody on the street that, that actually begins to understand what incident command actually is and what the purposes are will be an asset to us. So if people are interested, they should call the town office or you? BU. BU. Yeah. BU. It's a BU, it's a BU class. BU. Yeah, we've all, they can do either one. They can call the town office, but they can also sign up on, on uh, for BU. It's a Saturday class. It's titled ICS 402. Okay. And there's a, there's, there's a, um, a description there that it's a general overview of incident command. Okay. And the, the idea of having anybody involved when the administrate the town administrators are taking the training is that then they understand what administrators need to know in a okay. in an incident and how we respond and who's in charge and how we create the response system. And I think that was all. I mean, you have any thoughts, Lindley? Was there? Yeah. The only thing I'm realizing that. Um had come up, and this was from, from the BU side, um, you had submitted the proposal and when we were doing the, the data entry into our system for registering it, what the, there was a question of, because I didn't know what ICS was, um, you know, and should we have changed the name in, in the BU registration to be something a little more explicit? Because your description was great, but you could easily just scan over it and Right. Oh, I don't know what that is. It's probably not for me, and not read the description. And at the time, we'd had a whole debate: do we adjust his title to maybe be a little more explicit to, you know, right. get, get the outside public in? But we ended up not because we sort of were thinking maybe maybe it was really meant to be only for the people who needed it, like the municipality. So I'm just curious if, for the future, would you want something, would you want a title that kind of grabs people a little more? So I, the I got that email and I responded and said, sure, I understand, okay. go ahead, change the title. But then I but explained then it, that you, because the option was inter, Incident Command 101. And I was like, no, you can't, because it's Incident Command 100. See, this is, it's a certified educational FEMA education program, so you can't change the number. That's all I said. But then they're like, oh, fine, okay, we'll just leave it the way it is. So right. I agree with you. Some, some other title that would have said we're looking for people in the community to come out and learn what we're learning right. would have been fine, but we can't change the title, and I wanted to make sure that... And that makes sense. Because, truthfully, anybody... There are firefighters in town, maybe, you know, they're, this is all general level, so most people probably coming into this wouldn't know, but there are people in our community who are certified in these programs, and the, the title and the level is critical to, right. to them in terms of right. whether they take it. So that was my point. And, and anyway, we'll, we'll recover. We can, we can get Rich back here and have another training at another time if we want, but this Saturday is a great opportunity for us. And I just and that's 402? This is 402. Okay. Yeah. And it's Incident Command? System. System. IC, ICS. You know, I got the ICS. I was just, I, I was thinking the same thing. What am I going to write in the paper so people know what this is? All right. Well, maybe because I think it's a great thing to do. And if we do well, it, look, read in the read the go to if you can, yeah, go to go to the view yeah. and there's a good description of it, the secondary portion of it okay. is a description and it explains why we're, we're hiring and yeah. having it. Uh, no, I mean, if we if we did the same thing again next year, doing it as a BU class, I wonder if there's a way that the the town could sort of push that in a way that you know BU has to list it as the exact. You know, this is this is that number that the class is, but then um, have it sort of advertised via the town as well that you know there's this free class for everybody, and you know we encourage you for you know the, the benefit of all citizens kind of thing. You know, if there's a way to sort of work in tandem. We're pushing our way through it. The timeline has been pretty rapid. Yeah. We've had some meeting cancellations and stuff, so we haven't been as on front of and we 
it's a challenge to try to convince people that they're actually stakeholders and that they should be responding to us. Because this, in the past, all we've done is gone down through and checked off names and put people's telephone numbers in right. places. And, and then during an event, we just make a phone call and get somebody there. And, and right. so what this is, a, is a, an opportunity to build connection early in the process. So it's all no, and we're getting a lot of blank stares. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had some good, we've had a couple, of, we've had a few stakeholders that showed up and it's been, been and good. And I hope this Wednesday we're going to have quite a few more than two. Uh, but it takes a lot of time. Years. Kelly's been our primary, she's our, our <laughs> something information officer, PIO. PIO. Public, public information officer. So she's been, but she's got a lot of other things going on, and so she's been trying to reach out and and then follow up. And so the we're getting B, better. BU is holding the class on Saturday. Yeah. BU uh, is then, hosting. Yeah. And then Wednesday night is Wednesday afternoon is our stakeholder meeting for the LEO, LEMP. Three o'clock here. Yeah. Just so you know, I'm not going to include that. You don't want random people showing up to you? Not for the, not for the stakeholder meeting, right. but okay. it wouldn't hurt to have it in there. The stakeholders know who they are. Okay. As part of our writing our new LEMP, we're having a stakeholder meeting on Wednesday at 3 p.m. And... Um, this is a we're the test we're the test town. This is the absolute first time that this new platform is being run up the flagpole. The emergency state emergency management has chosen Bethel to be the, the guinea pig. Uh -huh. yeah. so. Nice. so we're pushing all the <laughs> we're pushing all of the So uh, the, the last item that we had that we added was um, it, it kind of seems like we got some communications. Everybody got the email that came uh, from the school, and it, it seems like at this time that you know between the, the town and the school that the communication that we have is maybe maybe not on par for you know what it should be. Um, for the weather events, and, and I don't really think that we can point the finger in one direction or the other from looking through it, but I mean, I know there's times where the school has reached out to, you know, the town, but, you know, sometimes it's difficult when it's six o'clock in the morning and you're trying to find somebody that's in a truck plowing with no cell service, you know, so that we have all those things and then, you know, but on the other end, you know, the, you know, should the town be in the position where we sh should be telling the school when they should be canceling the school, you know? So I, I don't think, we think that they're asking to be told. They're, they're actually they're looking for an update on the road. on where the road crew is in yeah. terms of preparing the roads. And clearly, if you're out plowing and sanding the road and you know that the school buses are concerned about the quality of the road, there's plenty of places to find cell service to respond to a text. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, I don't know who the particular, the right line of command is, whether they should be getting in touch with you or, or what, but there's, you know, hundreds of kids in town that are relying on the school buses and we only have one, one road crew. Well, that was my thought, is maybe bringing a little more of a formal system to it. But what has happened in the past? Yeah. That what has happened? Is, that's, that was my question. question. The issue I have with this is system already. the liability. My job as town manager is to protect this town from liability. That's one of the parts of my job. And when somebody texts somebody and says, is it safe to drive on the roads? I'm not going to open any of my employees up to making that decision. Because what happens if they say, yeah, you can drive. It's completely safe. That bus wrecks and kills a bunch of kids. Yeah, so I don't think you answer that question. Well, that's that, what the problem is with this. Well, but you, but you don't have to not answer. You get back and you say, we've had the road crews yeah. out, we've plowed the roads at 4 o'clock this morning and sanded them. That's all they're looking for is an update. So, Where are the road crews? We plan to go back out. We aren't going to be back on the road till 10.30 in the morning. The, and then the, school, then the school can make the decision. So are you saying that we need to designate a time and a place 
for every storm that, that this person needs to find cell service and call the school? No, I think that if they're contacted, they can respond. Right. I'm just. But thinking. I don't know what this contact. I don't know if this ever got to this person by five o'clock. Well, why? If you're out, say, if you're out plowing at two o'clock in the morning, you know that the school buses are going to be wondering whether or not they should be on the road. There's absolutely no reason why you can't be looking for a text. And I, I guess my my whole thing was just kind of you know backing up from you know if we know that the first school buses leave the yard at what six o'clock or six fifteen, you know, and we need to back up. There, there needs to be a time time in there where, where we can take action or the school can take action. The right? phone calls come at five o'clock in the morning about delay. Right. So so that's what we that's what they're looking for is a report on the where where the road crew is in terms of road maintenance. But I'm just wondering if you know, and I don't want to speak for Greg or anybody else, but maybe maybe instead of the school reaching out to the to the road foreman, maybe maybe it should be to Greg. I mean, yeah. just if, if we put it in concrete and said, you know, on uh, on potential weather days, you know, that there will be a check-in at 4:30 in the morning, whatever that time is, that that you know, in this case, if the liaison from the school is, is Andra, that Andra knows exactly who to contact at what time. Yeah. And at and that point, I don't think it's, I don't think what we're looking for is for Greg to necessarily say, hey, you're, you're all set to go, or, or no. you know, that's safe, but you could say our update currently is, this is the maintenance that we've done to the roads over this period of time, and you know. Absolutely. He's trying to. But, but I think I think what the school's looking at is they didn't get any information back. They, they've reached out on some occasions and they didn't get any, any information back. And, and that might be various reasons. That could be no cell service or plowing, you know, on the mountain road or, or something like that. But if there's a, maybe if there's a point at a certain time with the same individuals that they know or whether they at this time, I'm gonna call this person and then they can talk briefly. I mean, that's kind of what I got from that. I feel like the, there's a res, there's just a restriction on communication and there's no need for it. There's absolutely no need why, why if, if Alan can't get in touch with him, then he can have you get in touch with him. But clearly, there's, there, you know, um, I, I had a neighbor drive down the road the other day and pull a 360 out in the middle of, of a flat section of road because it was the, the sand, the snow had gotten packed down and turned to glare ice and there was a little skip of snow on top of it. And he said, we need sand out here. I texted you and I told you we needed to get sand on the back roads. That's no different than a school bus wanting to know whether or not the roads have been sanded. And I don't. I think we have to respond to them as just like any any other. And I, I don't have. I agree with you that you, you shouldn't be making the decision about whether or not the the um, roads have been plowed or sanded. But clearly, we're we've got a different schedule now than we have in the past. We're plowing based on need. We're plowing and sanding probably less. It used to be the trucks were on the road at 4 o'clock in the morning and the road was plowed and sanded by 7 o'clock. Absolutely every single day. And you can look at our highway department budget and you can understand what happened to that. Mm -hmm. We're not operating that way now. So we have to share the information with the schools so that they understand. Doesn't the, um, the school bus is, is operated by the school? No. Okay, so isn't that up to whoever owns the school bus to be finding out whether the roads are safe or not? That we're not, I don't think no, that no, we no, need no, to tell them whether the road is safe. No, no, but I'm just saying, it, isn't it more up to the people that own the buses to find out whether they want to travel or not? There's, there's another layer in there that we're not looking at. Well, as far as I know, Dave, at least from my conversation with him, he's been in contact with with, uh, with Alan to find out the information about the okay. roads himself. But the school also needs to 
get the information. Now, does the supervisor union have any say about this? Whether the schools are closed? I have no idea. Dave, do you have anything to weigh in on? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> <laughs> First off, I, I think it's great to have this conversation, but you're missing people to make a decision. I don't think people at the school can make a decision. I don't think you guys can sit here and make a decision. I don't think that the SU can make a decision. I don't think the bus drivers can make a decision. I think it would be great if you would all get together and talk about it. What, what will work? And go into that meeting with, we'll do whatever we can. If there's a liability issue, we can't do this. The school might say, well, we don't need you to say, the road is safe, we need you to say that you went in the cloud, and at 7.30, when our, or 7 o'clock when our buses leave, we know that the roads have been plowed and sandy. It's our decision to make whether we think it's safe or not. And as far as the buses, the bus, the bus owner is uh, Butler's bus at 11, and uh, to be honest with you, I don't know that he knows anything about it. They're just leaving it up to the coordinator. Well, I mean, Dave, Dave works for them now. Dave Bagley works for them. Dave, in the past. Yeah. In the past. Dave Bagley was out at 4 o'clock in the morning, drove over the road, contacted the road foreman. The road foreman says, I think you'll be good to go at 730. Or whatever. Or we can't get around at that time. You need. And they need to, the school needs to know by I'm not sure about the time, but like at 6 o'clock at the latest to be able to put out a, uh, whatever they call that, yeah. then the temporary, the school is delayed. They've been sending, them out. They've been sending them out at 5 o'clock just because. But people people need to know when their kids are going to school. <coughs> yeah. And as far as the liability, the school has liability too. Mm -hmm. So that's why not knowing I believe Andrea, this last time, in my opinion, made the right decision in that she did not know. She had been designated the person to make the decision for Bethel, so she closed school. But they don't have to close school just because the buses don't run either. They don't. They don't have very many kids in school. Well, do. no, you can, they can, you know, but that's, that's the truth of the matter is that they don't have any requirement to bus kids to school. They don't, they don't have to have a bus at all. So what you're suggesting, Dave, is that uh, Greg and Alan and uh, Owen and Andrew and Dave and, uh, get together, have a sit down, and Dave Bagley possibly, and have a sit down and discuss and, and try to come up with a, with a solution. What they all can live with. What do you think, Greg? Yeah, we do that. I mean, I think there's a lot of things, just from my observation, that you know, it, uh, it seems like you know, finding the correct touch points from the, from the school to the town, formalizing some sort of schedule on when, when that call will come. Um, that way they can get their information at an appropriate time. I mean, I still have my doubts with the school because I was a bus kid for, you know, eight, year, eight years of the 12 years I went to school. And but we used to put chains on buses and, you know, and, and how many times did we get called for buses being stuck on roads this year and then you, well, they don't use the chains and, you know, they have auto chains now and use those and I, I don't... I went to school here 12 years. They closed school three days. Yeah. In those 12 years. Different drivers. Right. Mm -hmm. Different drivers. The folks they got behind the wheel now, some of them, they can drive in the summer just fine. But again, like what Carl said, you know, I mean, I'm the youngest, you know, second youngest person here, and, you know, it was, they didn't close school, they just said we weren't going to run the buses today. And yep. either mom or dad brought you to school, or you stayed home. Or you walked. The walkers and everybody else went to school. But, I don't know, I just, it just, I mean, the main thing is unfortunately we're at the end of the I year. I think there needs but. to be open communication, that's all. Yeah. I, I don't think we can stand on some principle that I shouldn't be making the decisions so I'm not going to communicate with them. I don't, I don't see that as being the solution. I think that that clearly when, when someone knows that another individual is getting in touch with them, when they're a municipal employee, that they have every responsibility to contact that person and to be um, 
engaging and informative. And if you can't make a decision, if you can't make their decision for them, that's not a hard conversation to have. So I would suggest that the, that the board, that the administrators get together and yeah, make sure it makes perfect sense. I, I'm, I'm a little confused as to why it wasn't there. Some kind of a range sure, right. there to begin with. We met with them at the end of the year. Um, we talked to them. We already met with them. Yeah. And we talked to them about how this was going to work and how it was going to be. This situation here, I don't know what the story is mm -hmm. with the text. Yeah. If they got through, if they didn't, if they got ignored, if they got. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you that we did meet with the school, the principal, and Andrea, and Alan and I all met and sat down and talked about how this was in, in fall how this was going to happen, what we were going to, and I said, that's, I said the same thing to them, we can't make the call about closing it or anything like that, but we can definitely tell you what the, what we've done, basically. But unfortunately, the first text that came out said the town says we need to close for two, we need to have a two-hour delay. So then I asked her, hey, we don't want to have that responsibility, I don't want to put that on anybody, in, you know, in my organization, so they stopped doing that. But we did meet with them to, at the beginning of the year. Um, but again, this is something that didn't, you know, what we got, sounds like there's, you know, with the school combining now, there's gonna have to be a, this conversation all over again. We need to, we need to do something about it. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll check in on this again. I don't know um, what happened to the text. I don't know, I don't know if they went through. They look like they went through. So it usually doesn't it say that it doesn't go through or something. But um, prepared for tomorrow morning, what, what, do you, what, what, what are we gonna do for them? If the school is looking to figure out what the conditions of the roads are. Well, I'll call and put the person out. And I have, you know, I have the number, so. Yeah, they, um, they call, she, you know, they, like I said, they're making, she's up at five and making the decision. So that, like Dave said, by six o'clock, she has to get a, a message out to the families of the students to know whether or not the, so it's just, a, and like I said, I think it's just a matter of saying, you know, the guys started at five. They're only two thirds of the way through their road, through, through their by seven o'clock, then you can say, you can make your call. But they will be done by nine. Right, and I, and I think, right. So, so all they also have to figure out is, you know, if they let this <coughs> Alan or whoever know that they have to be in a spot where they can receive cell service around five o'clock. Personally, I'd like to see follow the chain of command here. I'd like to see the, the school contact you. Yeah. And then, then Alan, can, if to his convenience, can get a hold of you if he's in good salary range. I'm, I'm going to call Greg. You know, so. But it's a point about having a plan. And yeah. yeah, and I think it's what the whole and, idea here. And so knowing, knowing, and knowing what the drop, yeah. knowing what the drop the, the time, time is for either canceling school or delaying. Right. Because I think that's was the frustration on Andrew's part was on this particular one was that at first the school went out with the blast of a two-hour delay. Was the was the first thing we did, and then and then they ended up canceling because, from what I gathered, from not having enough information to make the decision. Now, canceling was probably the right, you know, decision. Well, anyway, they didn't cancel the night before, but from the right. Well, the storm that was, was, strong, yeah. was uh, coming in. Is it? Is it? I mean, I know when we have our next meeting, there probably won't be anything such as snow anymore this year, but yeah. you never know. I mean, do you, do you <laughs> do <more? laughs> wishful thinking? <laughs> Again, I, I don't know how this went out, because I know these texts were like, <laughs> I have the print out of one of them, but the other one I don't know. One was at 5 o'clock in the morning. I don't know when the other one came. It was like an hour later or something. 8, 8 a.m. Mm. Well, that 8.06 is on her phone. She printed them off. Oh, I see. Oh. There's a time that says yesterday at 5 6 a.m. I don't know what the second one, mm. right. where it says two hour delay. Um, I, I thought it was like an hour later, so I don't know what the situation was. I don't know if it was, he was somebody was way up in the mountain and they didn't get the thing until after 8 or it was received and ignored, or I don't know. I, I just, that. I'll just tell you, I mean, you, you don't go more than five minutes in this town without hitting cell service. There's, there's absolutely, there's a, a hundred different locations in this town where you can get at least two bars to send out a text message. You want to take my phone around? Well, I, I have, I, then get a tell, then get somebody with a service that can actually get service. Well, you want to pay for it? No, I'm just saying. I got my privileges, and, and by God, I can get reception up on the hill, but down here in Bethel, I don't get nothing. No, but. So, I mean, I'm supposed to spend money to go out and get something that, that's effective? 
I would be surprised if you don't get a reception up on top of Cushman. I can up there. Yeah, and then you probably can get it up here on top of Kit, uh, Christian Hill, and you can get it out there by 107. But I lose it coming down and give it. So you just need to stop. Why not? You know that, and I know that. I know. So, so, so I, think, I think the underlying issue here is that we need to get together and come up with a plan so that the people that need to make the calls are in the designated areas they need to be in to be able to make those calls. Yeah, I'll get the barcode with them. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, exactly. And, and I know there's probably not a whole lot more of that other than. You know, now is this going to work next year when we got two different school systems? Well, that'll have to be. You got to be one to get to the owner, but if my, if my, if my information is correct, you're going to have the same administration in this building. She will, or she will be, they'll be called as that plan. The owner of the building will be different, but the people that you'll be talking to will be the same. So would it be fair, Greg, if, um, if we had you uh, circle back up with the board at the next meeting to kind of let us know how, to, how your talk went or what the well, formalities of the decision is going forward or uh, as far as meeting up with the the other yeah, the school well yeah yeah I don't know if we'll be able to turn around that quickly or not but I can we can work on it. maybe we can jump over there with a couple you know you and Alan and yeah, and yeah I'll, I'll, if I have something to share I will. Yeah, if we can get it turned around Dave. within the next two weeks, we can. Uh, I'll definitely give you an update on it. Is that a fair time? To oh yeah, yeah. circle yeah. wagons and and you know kind of put a formal process to it that hey, we're going to meet every weather day at this time to talk about it and give the information and that will be it. Give it plenty of heads up. You might not make it to it's here in the middle of the curriculum change. Yeah, that's what you're saying. High school, the middle school, the, the people over there are busy. Right. But you know what I mean. So at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, just at the, the end of the day, the, 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 if, I can, we can, if I can get you something in two weeks, I will. I'm time. sure we can find the time, and the school can find the time to talk to yeah, It's just the, the, uh, just so that we can get on the same page. So. It's just the, it's to be available and, and uh, conversing. Mm -hmm. get this on the agenda it was late but this is just our annual financial plan so again this is part of our um, paperwork to the state to certify our roads um, this is shows what we receive for what we will receive for revenue for our roads from the state and what we spend um, in way of winter and non-winter maintenance and we are certifying or you are certifying that um, that the funds raised by municipal taxes are equivalent to or greater than the sum of $300 per mile for each class one, two, and three highway. We are way more than that, of course, but it's just an annual certification that I have to do. So I can get your signature on that.